me tell you, I've had a fantastic weekend. I spent yesterday in Janesville, Wisconsin with my brother Peter Barca from the 1st Congressional District. We were at a UAW uh, hall, Bronx Beer Heaven. But I want to welcome all of you. I want to welcome our special guest, Tim Waltz, here today. I want to welcome him to the Milky Way, to Milwaukee. You know, and you know, if you're back there listening somewhere, Tim, and he's got a wife, I think her name is Gwen. If you're back there listening backstage somewhere, Tim, let me tell you a little bit something, something about Milwaukee. Milwaukee is one of the places where the labor movement was started in this country. <laughs> Citizens in Milwaukee shed their blood for the eight hour work day. Milwaukee was a place where we challenged the fugitive slave law. When Joshua Glover was captured in Racine in the first congressional district, when he was captured in the place where I was born and brought to Milwaukee, 5,000 Milwaukee stormed the jail at Cathedral Center Square and Freedom. We don't want any slaves here. We want workers that work with dignity and are paid. Being for labor is part of our DNA. This, this, this is the place where Wisconsin is the place where the Wisconsin idea comes from. Oh yeah, civil service, workman's compensation, social security. Hey, we got some skin in the game in making sure that a presidency that would implement Project 2025 and take away all of these things does not prevail. We're on the front lines, brothers and sisters. And I want to just acknowledge my sisters in this struggle. I know they're here. I don't see them. Milwaukee County Labor Council President Pam Fent. Oh, yeah. Madam President, Wisconsin AFL-CIO Stephan Stephanie Bloomendale. Executive Director of Big Step, Lindsey Bloomer. Oh, yeah, y'all. We're going to put a woman in charge in Washington, D.C. And we've... But there's no place like starting it right here at home. I hear that the Honorable Mayor Cavalier Johnson was here earlier, the Honorable County Executive David Crowley. Hey, they're nonpartisan, but guess what, y'all? They Democrats. <laughs> You're gonna hear from His Excellency Governor Evers and Her Majesty, U.S. Senator Tammy Bowen. Now, I know you already heard from Peter Barker, so I'm not going to go over his whole resume, but I just want to tell you a little something, something that I know something about, and that's Peter Barker. He served in the state legislature for, for two decades, and guess what? I was there for 16 of those years. So I know him, and he is somebody that has worked tirelessly Secretary Peter Barker in this, uh, uh, in Evers' administration, and he's continued his struggle for economic development and job creation. And even though he was placed into a horrible minority until we got Janet Protasiewicz, <laughs> he 
He was the minority leader, even though this was where uh, uh, voting rights for labor were eviscerated. So we, we turned into a right to work state, derailed the $800 million federal money for that rail, and got conned in Foxconn out of Foxconn. But let me tell you something, y'all. Peter used to be the congressman of the 1st Congressional District. And let me tell you, he's going to be like the Phoenix rising from the ashes in November to take that seat back. It's not my job to introduce Tim Waltz, so I won't even attempt to do that. But I just have to tell you a little something, something I know about him. He was elected in the 110th Congress, and I was elected in the 109th Congress. So I had a chance to serve with him. And the other day, I was watching YouTube, and he started talking about the necessity to clean your gutters. <laughs> and so I looked at it again, and he said that, you know, whether or not you clean your gutters has something to do, you can tell what your character is, whether or not you clean your gutters. And you know, it was very timely because as we speak, they have delivered stuff to my house to, to, to replace all my gutters. I was one of those people not paying attention to my gutters. And let me tell you, just like he said, the gutters will destroy your home. You could have water coming into your home and, and rotting out the infrastructure, create mold and mildew in your house. It will destroy the foundation of your home. Ladies and gentlemen, we need Tim Waltz. We need somebody to come clean the gutters out. I mean, our gutters are clogged up so badly. It's clogged up our economy, clogged up our democracy, clogged up our civil rights, our voting rights, our reproductive rights. It's clogged up with $2 trillion worth of tax breaks for the wealthiest people and corporations rather than the opportunity economy we need. The gutters are full of wealthy tax scams that allow the richest to avoid tax payment. And let me tell you, there's a piece of the gutter missing. It's called the tax gap. And it's estimated to be somewhere between 500 billion and a trillion dollars a year where tax cheats and wealthy people avoid paying taxes that they owe. We got to flush these gutters out, y'all. We got to make sure that opportunity for housing and rental property and stuff that Tim Waltz was going to talk to you about, about what their plan is so that eco economic freedom can flow in our communities, educational opportunity can flow in our communities. And we can continue to expand the Chips and Science Act to create semiconductors, give down payment assistance, before I exit, I just want to say one thing about his service. I never served in the military, but I'm from a military family. Every generation of my family has served this great country. And let me tell you, J.D. Vance had the audacity to talk about our candidate, our nominee for the vice presidency. And let me tell you something. I served with him, and in 2010, when we took that shellacking, and when 63 members of the Democratic Party all across the country lost, and we lost the majority because of Obamacare, that now provides millions of people with health care. When we had dozens of Democrats that didn't vote for it because they were terrified of losing, because the Tea Party had deployed all of their agents all over the country to intimidate 
people, guess who voted for the Affordable Care Act from a marginal district? Guess who stood up? Tim Walz of Minnesota. That's what you call courage. When you care more about your people than you do this seat. I'm gonna tell you something else about courage. Huh? I know, I know I'm running out of time. I'm gonna tell you one more thing about courage. Tim Waltz retired in 2001, but came back into service after 9-11. That is because he wanted to clean the gutters. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just say one more thing. The hook is coming pretty soon. They're going to start playing the music in a minute. So I got to run. But you know what? Before the ticket change, the, the New York Times wrote an article claiming that union voters were about 50-50 on Trump and our Democratic nominee. I, why is that, y'all? Don't they know? I was at the scene of the crime in 2018 when Trump blocked 750,000 federal employees from belonging to unions. I was at the scene of the crime when he signed Schedule E, uh, designed to put civil service job protections to destroy them. Think Project 2025, y'all. When, he, when, when, pre, when then President Trump overturned a, an Obama era ruling under the NRLB that said that you had to have elections for unions swiftly. Now Biden reversed all this, but I want you to remind y'all when y'all get to the podium and when you are a union member, who is it that passed the Butch Lewis Act restoring your pensions with not a single Republican vote. <laughs> Who is it that votes for the PRO Act? Not a single Republican. Think about that when you go to the polls. All right, labor, I'm out. <laughs>